If you're new to the channel and you like what you see, well welcome to Life of Gaz. Now I try my best to upload a new video every single Wednesday and if you want to keep up to date with that make sure you hit the subscribe button and more importantly ring the bell to get all the notifications. So guys, hi, welcome to Life of Gaz and we're in week six now lockdown so I'm going to do my next fishing video which is going to be targeting bass. This is about the time of year where I start thinking about it so I'm going to talk you through some of my tactics. Now before we start this I will obviously say lots, obviously lots of people like to eat bass, they're one of the most fantastic eating fish out there but if you do fancy taking some of these fish home, make sure you check out British Sea Fishing for the up-to-date regulations as they're changing almost every season, especially over the last three years. But with that said, let's get started. Now bass can be quite seasonal and these guys they turn up in late spring and they're generally here throughout the summer. Sometimes they go early, sometimes they'll actually stay on through the winter with sporadic fish being picked up all winter long. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the one true sign which I always believe in which gives me that sort of inclination to go out and start targeting these fish. And you'll generally spot these guys on the beach or in the rock pools. And that's the arrival of the shore crabs that we get round here. Now we only really get shore crabs in here in spring and then these guys they start to peel in around about sort of May time and when you start seeing their shells on the beach that's when I go out looking for the bass. So first things first what we need to look for when I'm catching bass and this is a video which is tailored towards catching bass on Blackpool's beach. Lots of other marks are different but this is how I catch them here and the first thing I look for is the right area. Now I've got a little bit of video footage from an old fishing video here which shows a bit of beach which looks absolutely ideal for bass and this is what I'm going to talk you through next. Now with this little spot it looks absolutely fantastic for bass. Not only is there a little deeper gully just down in front of you which the fish will sometimes track into but there's that nice big sand bank up there as well. Now that gives you shallower water where the surf will hold and this often produces bass if you can put a bait up on top of it. But splitting that bank as well is this channel. Now this means that obviously you've got faster flowing water that bass like and if you can put a bait in there, especially when the tide's running, you also stand quite a good chance of picking a fish up there as well. Now once you've found the right bit of beach you want to focus on catching these fish in, then you want to find the right conditions. Now although they can turn up in any conditions, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk you through what sea conditions I look for which I feel give me the best chance of being able to target this species. Now the best conditions I find for catching bass is when you've got some surf about and for this in Blackpool you need a wind with some westerly in it and that needs to be about 10 to 15 miles an hour and if you can see a sea like this then I always think I stand a good chance. So next up let's have a look at the rigs that I use. Now the rigs that I use very simple, uh, I tend to use the same rig uh, with interchangeable hook lengths which is what this guy is all about just here. It's got three swivel points so I'm going to set this first one up as a free hook flapper rig and these are my three favourite patterns for actually targeting bass. And for the first one down on the bottom hook closest to the bottom I've got the green blacks with the red and a little spinner blade on there as well. That just clips on down there like this. Don't worry I will zoom in and show you these patterns in a minute. The middle one, another pattern which I find really successful for bass are the gold beads which I've got just here and that will clip on just here in the centre. Now the next one and this is one which has a little bit of a difference on it is it's got a spinning, attra uh, it's got a spinning uh, blade on it just there and also it's got a 13mm floating attractor bead you can see just here and this one goes on up at the top. Now this gives me obviously a range of baits that I can use and also a range of tactics whilst fishing on one hook length and one rig body. So down the bottom here I've got one uh, which is also very good for picking place up as well but the bass seem to like this, colours, uh, this set of colours when they're strung out across the bottom. Then in the centre um, just a little bit higher up, it'll still be sat down on the bottom itself uh, but obviously the rig will sit like this and then we've got obviously the gold beads in the middle and up at the top end of the 
this length. Then we've got this floating tractor bead, and this will bring baits up off the bottom. And this will pick bass up, which are swimming, not necessarily looking at the bottom. They'll spot that and come and hit it. And I have quite a lot of success with all three of these. But another rig which really works well for me is if I take these hook lengths off, is clip down rigs as well. Now, lots of people use clip downs and pulley rigs when fishing for bass and they're really effective and these ones I tend to use bigger hooks with because these these ones here I tend to use about a size 2.0 hook nice strong sturdy hook for bass but also not too big whereas with the clip downs I tend to try and use a little bit of a bigger hook and I've got four rows on here now this is a panel uh, this is good for fishing for bass although I do more often than not just use a single hook a panel really is for holding bigger baits on there just wrap that around and stick that up in that position I've also got a stop knot on there and that sliding stop knot stops the beads from moving too far away from the hook length for tractor beads are great at attracting fish but if they're nowhere near the bait then obviously they can start tangling up so that stop knot just keeps those guys in check and keeps them back where they should be just like that now as a clip down when it comes to casting that literally just hooks to the weight there and it all sits tight when it hits the bottom it'll undo and that will follow off into the flow of the current so there are the rigs i use i'm just going to zoom in on the patterns so you guys can see them and then we'll go on to the next section of this video so there we have guys my three favorite patterns we've got the green and blacks just here and I always put the old red one in there with a little spinner blade on there then I've got the gold, this works really well for me. And then of course, we've got um, the floating attractor bead as well. Now you don't necessarily need any attractors on them. I just feel more confident with them on there. And I've caught more bass with them on than without, which is the reason why I use them. So next, let's look at bait. Now when it comes to bait and bass fishing around the country, you see lots of bass getting caught on various types of bait. But for Blackpool, there's really only two baits that I use, and I'm gonna show you them now. First, you got the lugworm. Now, swimmers, which are lugworm, which are still alive and still haven't been gutted, I think are the best. Fresh work and frozen, I've caught them on as well. Another bait that I discovered worked well for bass is small pieces of razor shell. Now, I wasn't fishing for bass the first time I discovered this, but I know this bait has really done me well. Next up, let's have a look at the bites that the bass give you. Now they can vary, so I've got a few from old videos which I've shot, which have also made it up onto YouTube, so you may have seen some of this video footage before, but I'm gonna just talk you through some of those bites and show you what to look out for. A lot of the time, bass will hit the bait and hook themselves all in one fell swoop, and this looks like what happened here. But if you don't hit it quick enough, more often than not, they can shake the hook loose as well. So you do have to have some reflexes about with you. A lot of the time when bass fishing, you'll see a very sort of distinct pull down with a bite. Now this also gives you that chance to strike into it, but uh, like I did in this video, if you let it jump back up and then hit it just that little bit too late, more often than not, the fish is gone. But in this bit of video, uh, just like I'll show you in the next bit, bass are schooling fish. And as soon as I brought that one in, uh, I was playing about with it, my other rod went, and that actually did produce a fish. So if you get that first pull down, sometimes if it's not doing anything else, it's always worth leaving it. Just that extra sort of 10 to 30 seconds to see if anyone else is about. And the reason for this is a fact that with bass, they're a shoaling fish. Now you can see the moving patterns and the shoaling mannerisms of these fish in this aquarium shot. Now this is why it's always worth leaving it because there's often got mates with him as well.
So here's a good example when bass fishing of leaving that first knock and I left it, jump, well jumped down to strike it, missed it so I come back, give it another 30 seconds and it went again and I got into that fish. And if I was going to guess it of what actually happened there, um, looking obviously at the length of the time between the bites, which like I said was only about 30 seconds, I'd imagine that this was actually two different fish in the same shoal rather than the same fish coming back. Now something I'd love to know is obviously the fact with bass obviously coming in in groups is whenever I'm playing one fish how often does my other rod go and then stop because obviously as you see here it is quite common to get a very very quick bite and then the fish let go. And then of course you've got the slack line bite. Now this is where the fish runs in at you, it'll grab the bait and obviously pull the weight out in one go. That's why you see the rod jump up like it does. Now when you get a slack line bite, the only chance you have of getting that fish is catching that slack line up and putting some tension between the rod and the hook. So more often than not, if you see a slack line bite, run over to it, pick it up, bring it up as fast as you can and with any luck that fish will still be in touch. Now all of those bites you've seen just there were catching these fish high up on the wall off of the gimbal at Blackpool. I've caught them all up and down that stretch but um, these guys are also caught at low water as well. So there's a little bass which I picked up at low water at the end of the bass season last year. Now low watering can be an excellent strategy for catching bass. Now when I caught this one, this was quite late on in the year, there's a lot of whiting about as well. But um, when you're low watering for these guys, the advantage you have really is the fact that you can sort of stay back from the water's edge. Now when you do that, that means you can fish actually quite close in. So if there's a sort of big gully out in front of you and the sort of surf's only sort of 10 foot out from the edge of that, then you can just plop it in the back of that surf and leave it there as the tide's running out. But low watering, like I said, is a great strategy. It can be a bit dangerous, so you need to know the beaches quite well to be able to do it. But if you do, then it's always worth a go. Now bass are very aggressive biters, you can often see this in the hook placement when these fish are caught. So here's some examples of what I often expect when I've got bass on the line. Now bass are a very fast swimming fish and they definitely attack the bait when it's out there. So more often than not I expect to find these guys hooked up on the lips. Now it's very rare that I ever find a deep hooked fish but it's more actually common uh, rather than deep hooking to find the hook just sitting on the outside of the mouth where it appears the fish has grabbed the bait, carried on swimming at such a force that the hook has penetrated from the outside of the mouth in. Now handling these fish can be a bit of a minefield as well, they're spiky, they've got razor sharp gill plates on them as well and obviously that can hurt. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of video footage of how I pick these guys up. So you need to watch out for the gill plates which are razor sharp, hold the spines down like you can see just here or if you can try and get your thumb in the mouth of the fish and support the fish from underneath the belly and that keeps you away from all the sharp spiky bits. Now with bass probably around about 90% of the fish that I catch get returned due to being undersized or to being fish that I don't need to be able to eat. So what I'm going to do now is just show you how I return these guys and it's all about trying to get them back safe and happy. They're very strong hardy fish but that doesn't mean to say that you can just wing them off the top of the wall and hope for the best. Well that being said, it can be dangerous trying to walk all the way down to the water's edge. So just walk as far as safe as possible and then when the waves come in, try and throw them into the top of a wave so there's not much drop. If it's flat calm, just release them nice and gently into the beach, uh, sorry, into the sort of steps themselves. But if you're low watering, make sure you wade out a little way so the bass has got enough water over its back that it can swim off comfortably. And always hang around for a few seconds just to make sure that fish doesn't turn around and come back in.
Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video and we do hope this lockdown ends at some point over the summer to be able to give us a chance to put these bass fishing techniques into practice and to go and catch one of my favourite species out there. But if you have liked this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button down here, check out my last video just over here and of course my tackle tips and fishing playlist up top.